Well, I thought I would just take a minute and a few minutes and show you a little bit about uh, the poly spray and the poly brush. Uh, also, you can get a little view of my new paint booth I'm almost finished with. It's, uh, I still have the ventilation system to do. This is in my new uh, 60 by 60 hangar that I built. Um, I'm still finishing it up. I'm just uh, doing a little bit here and there as I go. Enough room for the RV, the airplane, or two or three. This is going to be part of the system for heating and air conditioning that'll be in here. It's all foam walls. What's kind of cool is I put the skylight lights all the way around the hangar uh, on both sides. You don't even, I haven't even put the lights overhead inside, but you don't even need them at night. It goes all the way around the entire hangar, keeping it very light. Uh, this is going to be the paint booth. You see I've got wings here that I covered quite some time ago and are waiting to go into the booth here shortly. Uh, to spray poly spray and poly brush, the spray part, you really don't need an airtight, dust-free environment. You can do it out on your driveway if it's not too windy. Uh, it's not that important uh, as it is when you do your final paint, once you want to do make perfect. So in this case, I'm trying to get, uh, I got Mitch today is getting me some paint mix for my next project here for this project. And it'll be here in about a week. And so after you get your final coats of, of poly brush and poly spray on, you want to let it gas off for about a week before you put your top coat on it. So I'm hurrying. I want to go ahead and get the poly brush and the, and the poly spray on this fuselage. So as soon as the paint gets here, I'll finish up the rest of the ventilation system for here, and I'll be ready to spray the finished color on here in about a week when that arrives. Um, what I've done, this is kind of a cool deal. I took a part of the hanger. These are just regular studs, so eight foot studs. I put them on one foot centers. And then I used a eighth of an inch masonite, like a hardboard panels. This is a material that on one side they make that's like a, uh, you'd have a dry erase board you can use on here. So it's got a slick finish on it, which should help keep the paint off of it and be easy to clean. It is only an eighth of an inch thick, so I put the studs one foot apart so it had a lot of support. I also glued with a glue gun with the liquid nail type thing and glued all the joints. So this is sitting on a stud, glue on either side. So it's glued all the way continuously and then stapled with a small staple gun on all the studs. And then just to, this, the glue will probably keep it airtight, but just to be sure, I went ahead and put some white duct tape over the joints. Here, when we finish the system, I'm using an actual regular furnace and blower, a great big unit out in the, in the hangar that's gonna heat and cool the hangar, but we'll also branch off with one uh, duct that'll come over. and It'll have actually two intake ducts. They'll be here high on the ceiling. It will then come across here and it will exit. The exhaust will be down low on this side of the wall over here and then exit the hangar. The, it will be drawing, the unit is actually going to sit over on the outside wall of the hangar and excuse the mess, I've just moved into it and just trying to hurry and get this painted. Over here is a box that I built a platform. This platform then has a large four inch filter right there, which the filter is sitting right there, it's a big, heavy duty, high MERV rating filter. This will then go, cut a hole and this will be sealed up tight and will draw air from the outside of the hangar. And it, this in the unit, this one of these units, which is a double unit, which is 10 tons each, one of those units will sit here on top of this. The air will be drawn from here outside, come up through here, and then be ducted out across the hangar. There's so much pressure one duct, the one duct system will come over to the paint booth here. The other duct will come off of here and run over to the center of the hangar and provide heating and air for the hangar. It will then have a shutoff valve over here for each duct because the pressure will be so great that I'll have to regulate the pressure that I want to go into the booth so I don't blow it out. There'll be so much pressure from these big units. So it'll sit here. I can shut off the valve going to the big part of the hangar, the big one, so I can let more air go this way, or I can cut it down and send more air this away when I want to use the paint booth and pressurize it. Again, this will be a positive pressure paint booth, which is far superior to a negative paint booth. And this whole system, as a matter of fact, will give me positive pressure 
in the entire hanger. So it'll actually push dust and dirt out of the hanger because it's positive pressure. We're bringing the air from the outside of the hanger into the hanger and then we'll exhaust it back out the backside and out the hanger. So outside air pushing into the hanger has more pressure since it's drawing from the outside, it pushes everything out of the hanger. So no dust or dirt will want to come into the hanger. The same thing in the paint booth, since you're positive pressure into the paint booth, then you're gonna be pushing dirt and dust out and nothing wants to come in. Most paint booths have a big exhaust fan, so it's sucking air. So what it's doing is trying to suck every place they can find to bring in some dust, it's gonna suck it into there. Instead, we provide positive pressure, more air pressure going in, then it's going out, the positive pressure then goes the only way out it can go, which will be out the exhaust over here and out the hanger. The entire hanger has been foam. You can see how foam insulated everything in the hanger, the walls, the ceiling. A cool thing to do, these are a skylight. So I've skylighted the top of the hanger all the way around the entire hanger. And I haven't had a chance yet to put permanent lights in here, which I have over there. But when I do that, I, I can do it for night, but I don't even need. Today is totally overcast and raining. And you can see the amount of light I got in here. It's just, just great. So, so positive pressure paint booth is the way to go. Let's talk a little bit about what we've done here. So this is the fuselage. We've taken it and I have already, of course, applied all the tapes on here. As I said in one of the previous videos, I think one of the most important things is to get your edges uh, uh, ironed in every single coat of poly brush I put on this airplane I always take the iron and I go around these edges and I smooth the edges nibbing the edges nibbing the tapes all these little tapes every time you put a coat on here this edge could loosen up a little bit with the MEK so what you do is you you just kind of seal it back down with the with the iron I take my iron here, I've got it on, oh, about 300. Actually a little less, it's on about 250 right now. I usually like it about 250 to 300. And pretty much what I do is every coat, I, I do use this. I have already put these tapes, you know, had two coats of poly brush first. Then we put the tape down with poly brush and then we put another coat of poly brush over the tapes. Every coat, I go along the edges and I just, don't delay this, don't melt, you know, don't stick it on there and let it sit. Don't, don't hold it on there, don't let it melt the poly brush. Put it on and move. If you feel, it feels like it's sticking and dragging, the iron's too hot because you're actually kind of melting the poly brush. You don't want to melt the poly brush. This is exactly what I do, just like this. I'm just hitting that edge and then I'm feeling it, okay? I'm just feeling it to see how, how it feels. A little rough right there. Might give it just a little bit of more of that. Anyway, I go around all the edges. I do it every single coat of poly brush that goes on here. Now I have sprayed on poly brush and brushed it one coat and then I've sprayed the whole plane with one spray coat. So this is ready for poly spray. I'm getting ready to poly spray this in just a few minutes so what i've done is when you when you're spraying it you want to increase your air pressure on your hvlp system to about 30 to 50 psi so a little higher than normal for spraying duhs paints they actually recommend 10 pounds of pressure at the gun you know at the spray nozzle so it's a lot lower this is an hvlp system high volume, low pressure, but when you're spraying the poly spray, or poly brush, excuse me, we're wanting to kind of push it down into the fabric. That's the purpose of this, and that's why we're gonna brush the first coat in as we spray it. Poly brush tells you to actually brush it in with the brush the whole way. If you do that, uh, Mitch told me, he said the reason you don't do it like that is because you'll end up with a patch quilt, because every rough, every dry edge you have as you go along, you're gonna come back and see it. With the poly spray, it was spraying it, and brushing it with a foam brush, then it smooths it out a lot better. So you'll spray, I might spray, and do it, spray a small area, they say three by three, and that's, that's about right. 
and you want to immediately get behind it with the brush and you want it quick while it's wet otherwise you'll leave it streaky so i might take this and spray it just the same way as you spray spray paint it with a half overlap i might spray that much this area right here immediately take <coughs> excuse me my brush and go back and forth just about this quickly and maybe do it twice <clears throat> like that so so while it stays wet it'll push it in and it won't leave edges and it won't streak if you keep trying to work it in as that poly brush sets up then all you'll end up with streaks and edges don't do it poly brush the secret is to get it on there spread it out and get out of there leave it alone okay just just spread it out once it's smooth leave it don't let it start drying on you again this is a very important area here because you're going to see it and you got, you're gonna see it anyway because here you're gonna have a carbon fiber door. Here, here you've got carbon fiber behind fabric. And then and with a piece of metal, you know, along here, remember, here and here, and then you got fabric. So no matter what you do, you're always gonna see this difference with the paint. But one thing, if you start messing around with the edges of poly brush and stuff here, anywhere that poly brush starts looking shiny and thick it's going to show through on the paint because the paint you'll actually see it under the paint as a slick area not quite the same as where the fabric is so the last coat that i the, the second coat i put over the tapes before i sprayed and brushed this fuselage i went around like i showed in the previous video i took a rag and mek and i went around the edges of this very good and cleaned up any excess poly brush anywhere around here i want it it's got it right to the edge i just took the wet brush and just run my fingers till it hits the edge of the tapes and just cleaned it all off so you don't have you got a nice transitioned edge then iron it out very good and then come back with your spray coat with it being brushed in which is the first coat then i let that set one day and then i came back yesterday and i just sprayed a coat on it just spray it so it's nice and wet looking, but not running, obviously, and leave it, okay? Then I'm getting ready to poly spray it. So what I've done is I've just finished going over it again with the iron and with my hand. And my hand is the best thing. You're Right now, you can't really see what's going on here because it doesn't really show up. The way the poly brush goes in and the color, you can't see maybe rough areas or anything. So take your hand go over every single part of this i take the iron in one hand and my hand in the other hand and i go over the whole every bit of this slowly and find any little spot if i find a little spot that's rough maybe a little piece of poly brush that's stuck out there take that iron and work it down and get it out because you really can't do anything with this beyond this point okay poly spray you don't work it you don't really need to be if you if you have to do anything after you poly sprayed it you're going backwards because you have to sand the poly spray down to get to the problem. And then you have to go back and put poly brush in it, poly spray back over what you sanded off. Contrary to popular belief, there really shouldn't be much sanding to be done on poly spray. It's just if you've got mistakes or problems. And I'll go back over after I poly spray this one, I'll go back over it. If you spray poly spray too dry, poly spray actually has silver metal in it which is what gives it the UV protection. If you stay too far off, you know, of the, uh, away from the surface, it'll start drying before it hits it, just like paint will. But with a poly spray, it evaporates so quickly that whereas paint will hit it, and maybe it's a little dry, but it'll actually start to just blend in and lay down and smooth out even after 24 hours, maybe even, but it'll start to move out. Poly spray is not, it, that MEK is out of there immediately so when you're spraying the poly spray if you're too far off or you spray it too dry you might get a rough kind of a sandpapery feel you know and that's not too bad most of most of that roughness is going to be covered by the top coat if you're using duhs paint it'll go in and smooth over fill that all in smooth over good but if you've got any little bumps or maybe where it spit a little bit of the silver out in a spawn spot you'll fill it you just take a sandpaper i mean like a 800 grit sandpaper almost nothing and you just lightly just barely pushing the paper on it over it just until the roughness is gone you don't even shouldn't even be taking any silver off if you take silver off you got to put it back so get everything done on here you want to do right now make this plane just like you want it to be finished 
at this point. Smooth everything out, look at every bump, any flaws you've got, fix them now, because this is pretty much it. Anything you do after this point, it's gonna be a lot, of, a lot more work you know, to do. So that's about all I can think on my LED lights. Put them all on one little breaker because they don't draw any power hardly at all, all the way around. Some down at this level, some up at this level. Some of them need to be adjusted. There it is. So, in any case, that's that, and that's my paint booth, and now time to spray some poly spray.